It's all about pulse width modulation. Another means to control your heater element. I'm at 50% at 76 volts. If I push and hold the button and increase, you notice the light gets brighter, the heater element will get hotter, or push and hold the button, or go to small increments. Welcome back to Barley and Hops, I'm George. We are going to graduate now from the variable solid state relay to the pulse width modulator. Uh, so this is a continuation of that series. Now there, the, the result with both of these is really the same thing is controlling a heater element, a bake light oven, a light, a motor, or any other type of thing, anything else that's associated with your system. Um, but it does it a little bit differently. In this particular case, we were controlling the phase. But in this particular case, we're going to be controlling the pulse width. Uh, we don't want to get into too much detail about that. This thing is pretty amazing. Um, and relatively inexpensive. Now, I am going to place the link to this particular pulse width modulator uh, in the information section. Uh, if you go to Amazon to order one of these, it may not be available. That, that's okay. Uh, look, search around on Amazon. There's more than one vendor that offers these, and the last one I checked was like, it, it was less than 25 bucks. But here it is, kind of like in a nutshell, um, and I put this together uh, we're going to put one together right here uh, on this board, because I know this looks like a hot mess, but we're going to take all of this off, not all, we're going to take most of this off, and we're going to put the pulse width modulator on here to show you how it's wired. Uh, it's really, really simple. Um, I've got it turned on now to 65%, and you have an up and down arrow button here, and this up and down arrow button either increases or decreases incrementally by one, uh, the percentage of power that's going to, and we use the light bulb as our example, uh, that light bulb right now is at 65%, there you go, and we start to increase that, you'll notice how the light bulb gets brighter, or we can reduce that and the light bulb gets dimmer, just like your heater element would. So in this particular case, it's working on 53 volts. Now, I've also got an amp meter in here, but this amp meter won't read less than a, uh, an amp, so it's going to continue to read 000, zero, zero unless I have an element on there. Because remember, the element is going to draw. Your circuit amperage is controlled by your load. And we already know that a light bulb doesn't have a big load, so it's not going to draw that many amps. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I've, I've kind of left our board untouched because everything most of this will generally remain the same with the exception of the section here in the center which is what we're going to energize and use to control our load and that is this one is the variable solid state relay so we need to remove this and put our pulse width modulator there and wire that that that's as simple as it really gets so let me do that. Well, we've got this drawn on the board. This is just a, a, like a real simple schematic. Um, it, uh, but I want to show you this kind of close up. Now, I've got two here, um, and they both do exactly the same thing. They do it just a little bit differently, okay? Um, and I've got this one here. I believe this one is a 4,000 watt. This one is a 10,000 watt. Um, so th both of them are adequate. Um, though this one costs probably around eight, nine bucks. Uh, 12 bucks maybe uh, this one's like 25 bucks it, but this one is all enclosed and it has a potentiometer on the side you know something reminiscent to the remember the potentiometer that we used to control the variable solid state relay well there this is controlled by an SCR a silicon controlled rectifier and same with this one and but you can control the amount of power the perceived power that your load recognizes by adjusting a potentiometer. Well, there's another option as well. Uh, and that's what comes with this one. And I'll give you a close-up look. There it is. Yeah, this comes in three pieces. Okay, it comes with the main body, uh, with the circuitry and everything that you need. It comes with a wire, and then it comes with a keypad. And the keypad is actually two pieces. Uh, the keypad looks just like 
matter of fact, it actually looks like that. And then here's your up and your down button with the digital display. And then, of course, this cover comes with it and has a peel. You peel the back off, it gets sticky. And once you mount that, you just stick that cover over that and just makes it look neat. Now, here's what this looks like. This is the cable, the connector between your digital controller. That's this. And you'll see it has a circuit. There's a circuit card on the back, the circuitry, so that it can send a digital signal to the pulse width modulator via this cable that just plugs in the back. And that's a real simple connection. Here's what's really neat about these things is they have four pins. You have this one says power. You have one here, you have one here, and then you have output. You have one here, and you have one here. Well, guess what? Yeah, we just run our power into the power lugs, the first two pins, and within the circuitry in this SCR mounted on a heat sink, uh, the output power comes from the output pins, this one and this one. Here's what I'll tell you. Uh, I, again, there are things known as conventions. I normally always put, you know, black is hot for 120 volts. Uh, so I put the black on the left. That's the first one I connect, black and white. So I have 120 volts and a neutral. And then my output is 120 volts and then a neutral. So you do them in the same order, black, white, black, white. What happens if you get them reversed? Well, then you're actually sending power in the wrong direction. Do it the right way, okay? Uh, what if it was a 220 volt? Well, this one's rated for 120 to 240 volts. Oh my goodness. This one is the same way. So we would have the black and the red on the power input, and then guess what? A black and a red on the power output. Uh, so just follow the same convention and keep things straight. Let's wire this. Well, now that I've got my own full attention, um, I've got this thing laid out here, and that's what it's going to look like in your hand or on your board. Um, of course, I've got the two powers. That's the power in, and this is the power out. We have the same configuration laid out here with a 120 volts, a neutral, and a ground. And here is our load. And remember, we use this from that other video. Just watch the video if you want to know how to hook up because this is exactly the same way. This is our volt amp meter. And we had that connected here through that toroidal coil, or uh, some people call it an amperage transformer, uh, but that's your sensor that goes around the line uh, to test the amperage. It measures the amperage that's going through your system. Um, and this, of course, would be our, our leads for our hot and our neutral which the black goes to the black and the red goes to the red, wherever you put it. Remember, if you put it on front of the system, you're going to always read the full voltage available. If you put it on the back of the system, you're going to read the voltage provided. Okay? That's just, you're, you're measuring from, it goes in here, it gets controlled here, and it's outputted there. So you want if you want to know the voltage here, um, hook it up on this side and you'll always have the same voltage. If you hook it up on this side, you're always going to know what you're only going to know what voltage is going to your load. It again, it's one of those it's totally up to you. But I do tell you this much is that your toroidal coil um, that should be on the load side so you're measuring accurately what the load is going to your or the amperage is going to your load. How do how do we how do we how do we wire this up? Real simple, okay? We've got 120 volts. Remember, I've got my switch right here, and we're switching that power because all we're doing is making a break right here on this 120 volt line. And oh, by the way, for the jump, you know who you are. This, my friend, is rated at 15, uh, yeah, 15 amps for 240 volts and 20 amps at 120 volts. I don't care how many times you demand I change the video. It is not going to happen. Uh, I even sent you the link. You can look this up, which you probably should have before. Um, but okay. Uh, and I'll leave your comments up. Okay. Just keep it nice. All right. But this is a 
20 amp, 120 volt switch. It's a rocker switch. Okay, um, so what we'll do is we come off of here, we have our hotline, and that goes down. What did I say? I said my power, my black line, the power goes in the first screw. And then what we do here with this one, here's the only difference, the major difference between this and the variable control is this one is my neutral. See, that little squirrely thing means you go past that wire, you go over, you don't connect them. That goes to the other pin. Now, we run the black from the output. Goes to my load. And the red from the output goes to my load. So that's how that's wired. It is that that simple and that direct. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and hook this up because um, I want to know in this particular case when I'm using a pulse width modulator, um, it's nice to know what the voltage is at the same time. Again, could I hook this up on this side, wire it to this side, and know what the voltage is constantly and only change the amperage reading? Yeah, I could. But I like playing with it. I like, you know, to me, I like to see what 43 volts look like on a light. Or with, you know, I just want to know. Oh, okay. So I just connect this here, or I could connect it here. That would make sense. You see, I'm still in the circuit. And the same thing with this one with the neutral wire off of that meter. I can connect that one here. Oh, this one. I should connect this all the way here to that screw. There we go. Uh, and that will make this work. So that's how it's wired. Let's wire it. The first thing I got to do is I got to get this stuff off of here, uh, and it, it only takes a couple of seconds. Okay, we've removed the variable solid state relay and the potentiometer. I'm pretty much set now. What, I'm, what I've got, and you have to follow, all you got to do is follow this. Remember, this was the hot wire going in and the hot wire going out, so when I turn the switch on, I get power. So I follow that line, and that's my hot lead, and I've already pulled off the insulation here and exposed this wire. Remember we had the spade on there? I had to cut that off because this one goes right here. You remember that was the first one. That's an in. And then I have my neutral. And remember the neutral was, it went straight to my switch, but now this one in this particular case, it goes to the second lug and in conventional wiring this one will be black and this one will be white in this particular case i'm using a piece of extension cord so both of them happen to be brown but you just track them back to track them back to the plug to find out which one's which all right now i've got if i turn this on i would have power to my pulse width modulator uh, but now i got to get power from the pulse width modulator to the receptacle. So, and remember, I'm going to hook up my digital multimeter, my volt amp meter. Uh, I'm going to wire that up. So remember my toroidal coil, where does that go? That goes on the hot side of the receptacle. And for those uh, who just kind of get confused, you'll always notice the hot side is always going to be the smaller blade. This larger blade is your neutral blade. And of course, the small hole is your ground. So if I run that wire through there, and remember, I needed that little little wire as we did up on the board because we're gonna get, we've got to give power to our meter. So I put those together. Remember, black was the first one on the left. Well, this one is my hot, which is would be the black going to my receptacle so this one goes on here there and so this is the lead that goes to the silver side of the receptacle or the neutral and I also need my red wire I'm using as a neutral for my meter and that one goes to the second switch or the second screw
Now the last thing I need to do is connect the power to the actual meter itself because I had that disconnected. Let me grab my small screwdriver. I'll hook the black to the first screw. Now in practice, I always hook up the hot wire first and then I hook the neutral wire up second. Uh, in this particular case, it really doesn't matter which one of these two, well, there we go. It doesn't really matter which one of these two screws you put it on. Uh, I always put the hot wire on the very first screw and then the neutral wire on the second screw. It will work either way. Last but not least, I've got to find it. Here it is. Now all we've got to do is take our digital control module and connect it via the cable that comes with your pulse width modulator. And that just plugs in. And it only goes one way, so you can't get it wrong. Well, I guess you could get it wrong if you forced it. But if you, if you have to force it, you're putting it on backwards. Turn it over. What do we have left? Yes, all we've got to do now is add the light and then plug it in and turn this baby on. Let's do that. We're all set now, we got power. We got power, we got it plugged in. I've got my switch, my light, and we're ready to test it. And here's how it works. Power on, light comes on. My volt amp meter is reading 124 volts at 1.29 amps. Um, so here's my down arrow. I'll just start to decrease that. And as I decrease that, my voltage drops and my amperage drops. And of course, in line with that, you'll notice that the light starts to dim. We are now at 39% power, 73 volts and 0.95 amps. So this is just another means, another method for you to control that heater element uh, in your still or your Bakelite oven or a motor or um, any other kind of an application or appliance that you have where you need control over the voltage and the amperage that's going to your device. And you can do it for like 25 bucks. Um, place it in one of those boxes and it looks cool. Uh, you don't have to have an amp meter. Uh, you do not have to have one of these. You can skip that all together and just, uh, just rely on, I know that 39%, I look at the light and it's, okay, it's 39% on. And it, it gives you a numerical readout so you'll always know where you're at. That's it for today. Happy distilling.